Hello, music theory students. This video is going to talk about the descending natural succession sequence, why it has its name, um, as well as how you set up the baseline for that, which is the most important part of these sequences. As you can see, there are three uh, sequences, the descending natural succession sequence, the deceptive resolution sequence, and the ascending 5-6 sequence. I will have a separate video for each one of these sequences. So I'm talking about them um, um, as explained in the Harmony Through Melody textbook. Um, so if you want to read more information about them, there's a lot of good details in the textbook as well. This is chapter 21 from that textbook. The descending natural succession sequence. Oops. Okay, so this is uh, one of the most common sequences. Uh, you will uh, recognize the sound of this one. Um, you start by putting whole notes on the downbeat in a descending four note scale, if we want to talk about it as a scale, but you start on the tonic, scale degree one, you move to scale degree seven, six, and you end on scale degree five. Okay, so just descending by step from the tonic to the dominant. We then elaborated. There's two ways to elaborate this. We can do an extended double skip, like here. Um, and this then on the weak beat, we uh, then can do either a triad or a seventh chord. Okay. And once you choose, that's the one that you do. The second elaboration is to do a skip step. Okay, so in this case then, and then again, it's a triad in first inversion or a seventh chord in first inversion. Okay, so double skip, extended double skip, okay, down a fifth, up a fourth, or skip step. I want, I, the, the textbook doesn't talk about this very much, but a lot of times when you look at other theory textbooks, they talk about the chords that this works through. Now, this is a diatonic sequence. And, I, and in the first video that I talked about in the introduction to this, I talked about this being diatonic. And it's diatonic because when it moves to a different triad, it doesn't alter the triad. It doesn't turn it into a tonicizing chord or a applied dominant or a, um, or any other kind of a chord. It simply takes the notes that would be in that chord um, and uses it so, and uses it in a pattern that repeats, right? So in our statement one of this, we go from a tonic and then we end up down a fifth gets us on the four chord or the subdominant, okay? And that subdominant can be either a triad or a seventh chord. Then we move up a fourth. That gets us to the seven diminished triad. This is the only time when you're allowed to use that seven diminished triad because it's, it's within this pattern that repeats. So it's the diatonic triad to the key, even though it's diminished. So we end up with a diminished triad on that downbeat. We move down a fifth. We end up on the median, minor median. Again, this can be a triad or a seventh. Um, and, and, uh, and then again, now once you choose one of these, if you decide you're going to just do a triad here, then this one has to be tried and this one is, it has to be a triad. If you try to do a seventh, then this has to be seventh, this has to be seventh, this has to be seventh. Uh, in your decorating, you might just move from one to the other. That's the other possibility, right? The statement three, we end up on six. And then, um, uh, and then, so that's the submedian. And then that moves down a fifth and we end up on the two chord or the supertonic triad. Um, and then that moves up a fourth and we finally get to the dominant. Okay. And then from the dominant, we can then move into our perfect authentic cadence, but our, our actual sequence is this first, these first three measures here. So a summary of that. Uh, so we have, uh, we start with that descending line that goes from the tonic down to the dominant. We insert either a skip step or a extended double skip to get our chords here. And of course, regardless of whether you do the, the extended double skip or the skip step, they both are, the root of both of those chords would be the four chord and then the three chord and then the two chord. So the question then remains, why is this called a descending natural succession um, sequence? And it's because it's moving through the circle of fifths. It's moving backwards through the circle of fifths, right? We're going down a fifth, and then down another fifth, though, because we very quickly get out of range, we go up a fourth instead of down a fifth. 
down a fifth, down another fifth, except for in this case, it's up a fourth, right? So down a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth. That's the root movement, regardless of whether you're doing it in root position or first inversion, okay? So the root movement moves through the circle of fifths backwards, okay? Uh, I'm gonna end this with an example from the literature. If you've, if you've listened to my other video, the introduction video, we've already, you've already heard this, um, but here is what it sounds like in within a piece. This is from Trois Lessions, from the, the Chacon movement from a Handel piece. And there's the overview of the descending natural succession baseline.